for stopping by to check out another fun-filled, action-packed, and exciting episode of Vintage Audio Review. In this episode, I'm going to talk about this Pioneer SA1270 integrated stereo amplifier that was sold around 1985, best I can tell. It was part of a system that included a phonograph, a cassette deck, a CD player, and a tuner, and it actually has a remote control that works, that came with it. It has the original owner's manual that also came with it, and the original box and styrofoam packing material that came with it. It also came to me with a problem. One channel did not work. So before I get into the repair, I wanted to show a little bit more about this unit. Oh, one thing I thought was kind of interesting on this let me set the case up i thought it was interesting that they said not to stack more than 22 of these on top of one another so i thought i would give an overview of the 1270s features it has the main power switch here and then this will turn on the power to the unit And that click means the speaker protect relay came on, which is a very good sign. It has a, a five band equalizer here, and it displays the corresponding levels on this uh, LED display there. It has controls for two sets of speakers, it has a headphone jack. It has a, an equalizer for recording to a tape deck. So you can put the equalizer functions that you set here and apply them to a cassette deck recording. It has the uh, standard loudness control. The indicator is there. The indicator for the uh, equalizer uh, record setting is there. And then it has video, tape, CD, tuner, and phono functions all there. The balance is set uh, here. It just moves the LED one way or the other. And then your volume is the overall setting here. And it has your mute there. So it's pretty pretty basic unit. It also, let's uh, crank this off. When the uh, power is first turned on, this will flash until it's clear. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Looking at the exciting rear of the SA1270, we see that we have uh, an unswitched outlet and two switched outlets, which probably were designed to go to the uh, CD player or tuner or tape deck. It has the uh, non-audiophile grade uh, speaker connectors for your uh, two sets of speakers. It has a control output that I'm guessing went to either the CD player or the tuner, possibly the uh, phonograph. It has an adapter. I really couldn't find out a lot, but it's not a uh, pre and it's not the main in, main out, pre in, pre out. It's not that. It's for some uh, signal processing adapter that you could hook into it. Um, and then it has your tape monitor, your video or aux, CD tuner, and a ground for the phono. And of course, the phono is there. So it's pretty basic. So what we're looking at here is the output of the Pioneer. SA-1270 with a complaint that one channel sounded bad. Well, I'll bet that one channel is the left channel. That's the one in yellow. Let me get rid of the uh, left channel for a moment. And right now I've got this thing going into some 8 ohm dummy loads and a little over 5 watts of power. The THD for the, the right channel in red is pretty good. And it's got a good SNR and the THD plus noise is decent. Now I'm going to put on the left channel. And you can see that it's hardly got any power, 60 milliwatts, and uh, enormous THD. And there's really some, some distortion going on. So with a little luck, we'll figure out what is causing a problem. So I thought the best place to start would be to look at where the left channel input came in and see where it starts distorting. I'm not so worried about the output stage because the speaker protect relay comes on and if there was something fried in that one channel or if it was off by quite a bit with some bias voltage, the relay wouldn't click on most likely. When I scope uh, the left input signal comes in over here, 
and goes into this base of this uh, Q601, which is a dual PNP transistor. What I found is I have a, a nice signal here, a nice sine wave, uh, the one kilohertz wave I was looking at, but this is distorted like heck. Let me bring that picture up so you can see what it looked like. And you can see the purple is the distorted one. That would be your left channel. And then this is what the right channel looks like. Now, I did hook up a scope to the right channel um, down, down here. And it showed the same signal basically right at both bases. So there's something, either this guy's bad or there's some biasing feeding it that is bad. And so I will start measuring voltages. All right. So I went in and measured the voltages that were indicated on the schematic to see how they compared with my readings. And those are the ones in red. And I got a little bit too hung up on this half a volt difference between these two collectors. Um, I started checking a few transistors both in and out of circuit using my Sencor TF46 portable super cricket transistor and FET tester and did not find any transistors that were bad. I also checked some of the, the diodes here and they all appeared good. A few of the resistors, they all measured good. And then I was looking at this 74 millivolts where it says zero and I went over to the right side and it was minus 56 millivolts. So it it's, was pretty close to what it should be. However, when I checked the base here, it was reading minus 0.65 volts. And with that being negative, Q1 is not going to turn on. I double checked the right side and indeed that was reading what it should, 0.6 volts. So I did a few more measurements around here and these guys were all off. They, they were you know, minus instead of plus. And I figured it had to be one of the biasing uh, resistors here. And when I was trying to locate R629, visually, I noticed when I did find it that it was discolored, not really burnt, but it had gotten hot. And I figured the most likely reason for it getting hot would have been C617 shorting out, which was indeed the case. So I replaced C617. I also replaced R629, which did test good, but I replaced it anyway. And I replaced the right channel's equivalent of C617, which I believe was C618. It tested good, but I figured might as well replace it as long as I was in there. So that solved the problem. One of the things that I spent a little bit too much time looking at was the, um, the distorted waveform here. And if I'd have followed the circuit back over to the emitter resistor, it would have pointed me into it being a feedback point, And I would not have got so hung up with this stuff. So anyway, the unit works fine as um, you will see in the data. So this is the inside of the Pioneer SA1270 amplifier with the cover removed. And I'm going to point out where the problem was if I'm able to get in there a little bit. So right here is the capacitor that was shorted out and the resistor that was stressed was this guy right here that was replaced. There's also another capacitor for the other channel right here and I replaced that one as well. And so that was the extent of what needed to be done. There are no adjustments for bias settings on this amplifier. So the first piece of data we're going to look at is the THD and SNR at 1 kilohertz of the integrated amplifier with a power output of about 5 watts into 8 ohms and a gain of close to 29 dB or 28 dB. And as you can see, it's got a very good SNR, a good THD plus noise, as well as the distortion is really looking pretty good here at 5 watts. What we're looking at here is the THD and SNR at 1 kilohertz with the amplifier at 100 watts into 8 ohms. And you can see it looks pretty decent. And the THD plus noise is not bad. And it's spec'd at 105 watts per channel into 8 ohms 
from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz with no more than 0.05 percent that was when it was brand new what we have here is the thd versus frequency plot for just the left channel at both 105 watts into 8 ohms and 26 watts into 8 ohms the green trace is the 105 watts into 8 ohms and basically from about 45 hertz on we meet the less than 0.05 percent distortion and less than that it does start failing that requirement of less than 0.05 percent but even then the maximum is 0.5 percent at 20 hertz so here we have the maximum power I was able to get out of the SA1270 before the distortion got really bad and so one channel is 112 watts the other 117 watts the distortion is still meeting the uh, requirement and the SNR is not bad the uh, THD plus noise has creeped up a bit but overall it's still performing pretty decently for an old amp so here we have the frequency response with the amplifier running 100 watts into 8 ohms and it's showing a 0.6 dB flatness across the band and a 0.2 dB channel balance which is pretty good here we have the THD and SNR of the phono stage measured at the tape monitor output and it looks pretty decent the THD is good the SNR is not bad nor is the THD plus noise you can see that 60 Hertz hum from the power supply showing its ugly head a bit but it's still not that bad so here we have the frequency response of the phono stage measured at the tape monitor output and it is an expanded scale which shows a flatness of about plus or minus half a db which is better than the plus or minus 1 db spec interesting to see how the 1 kilohertz graphic equalizer slider does when i increase the gain by 5 db and what i'm looking for is how bad does it make the distortion so here we go i will bring it up slowly we start off about 28.3 db so we need about 33 db of gain to be up 5 db the control has a spec of plus or minus 10 db i'm not going to test the full range but we're almost at 33 there we go 33 db the power went up quite a bit from 5 watts to i don't know say 16 watts and the distortion uh, the thd increased a little bit but still is quite good um, so i'm going to say that that equalizer control is very effective i'm not going to test any of the other frequencies but i was just curious how this particular equalizer worked on the pioneer and it seems to work well i would like to point out that i spent about two and a half hours troubleshooting the sa1270 i probably could have cut a lot of time off had i paid the five dollars and downloaded a service manual for this unit but I tried doing what I could without a schematic, which is what I normally do. I was very pleased by the performance I measured on this unit. Particularly, I thought the phono section did rather well. So it was measured at the tape monitor outputs, which would give you the best performance of just the phono stage. Overall, I thought the SA1270 fared pretty well for being nearly a 40-year-old unit and met its specifications. Once I had completed all my measurements and had buttoned up the unit, I connected the SA1270 to my KEF-107 speakers. The KEF-107s are rated at 4 ohms and did not present any problems for the SA1270. I used the Surfans media player, which has a line-out jack, to connect to the CD input on this and listen to music for about 20-25 minutes at a fairly decent level. I was hitting the mid 80 dB SPLs during this listening session and it sounded fine. I did have the equalizer flat but I did have the loudness switched on and I thought the unit sounded really decent. I didn't notice anything unusual or sounds or uh, it just worked fine. When I was all done I did 
noticed that it was um, warm at the, the top of the unit, so I got my IR thermometer out and measured the temperature, and there, here's a quick little video that shows the temperatures of the unit. So overall, I was pleased with the performance of this unit and feel it would be a good buy for the right price, whatever that may be. It is obviously not as pretty as some 70s Pioneer gear, the Silver Place stuff, but it would work well in the right system. I appreciate your watching, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so, and I would like to see any comments you may have. Have a good day or night.